Hey, what's up guys? This is Neil Reyes and I want to welcome you to today's episode of Champions Minute. Have you ever had a time in your life where you had a need but you didn't know how you were going to meet it? Well, we're going to talk about that today. Get ready. Drop to Today we're going to be continuing our teaching on the names of God and today's name that we're covering is Jehovah Jireh. Again, today's name that we're covering of God is Jehovah Jireh and Jehovah Jireh means I am the Lord who provides. Again, today we're continuing our teachings on the names of God and today's name is Jehovah Jireh, I am the Lord who provides. If you've been with us or if you go back to any of our previous teachings, for the past several Fridays we've been covering the different names of God as described in the Bible. The reason why we've been doing this is it allows you to understand God's character greater or clearer in certain specific situations. These are names that you can certainly leverage in prayer and use His name with authority over specific situations. But even if you choose not to, it's important to understand who God is in these specific situations so that when you encounter these areas within your life, you have a renewed, or in some cases, new confidence in God, knowing who He is, knowing what He is, and knowing what He said He would do for you. Today's name that we're talking about is Jehovah Jireh, and it is, I am the Lord who provides. If we go back to the very beginning, when God first created man and first created woman, He provided for them within the Garden of Eden. That's right. He provided for Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Now, if you know the story of that, they ended up getting kicked out of Eden later on because they violated some things He told them not to do. But He still provided everything that they would need. As we study this name, this Hebrew name, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh is I am the Lord who provides. The first time we mention or the Bible mentions the name specifically Jehovah Jireh is in the story of Abraham. When God turned around and if you know the story of Abraham, he, God had promised him that he would be the father of many nations, but yet he never had a child with his wife Sarah until he was a hundred. That's why it was such a miracle and that's why Abraham is tagged as being or labeled as being the father of faith because he had faith in God to provide for him. But if you know the story, later on, God asked Abraham to sacrifice his one and only son at that time, which was Isaac. Now, he had another son with Hagar, and that was Ishmael, but that was not in the, within the covenant of his marriage. That was with his wife's maidservant. But he only had one son within the covenant of his marriage, and that was through Sarah, and that was Isaac. So one day God comes before him, and, or I say comes before him, but he speaks to him and tells him that he wants him to go to the mount, that he wants him to sacrifice his only son to him. As Abraham did that and he goes up the mount, if you know the story, he turned around and when he got to a certain point, he turned around and told his servants, my son Isaac and I are now going to go up the hill and we'll be back in a little bit, we'll return in a while. That's very key that he told his servants he would return because even before the sacrifice was to take place, he already knew that God had provided. In his faith, he already knew God had provided. That is so important to us because as believers, we need to understand when God makes a promise to us, whether if it's something to us personally within our lives or if it's something to, uh, as a promise to us through His Word and the Word, the Bible is filled with many promises from God. If He's given you a promise, that promise will not return to Him void. But it's your responsibility as a believer to, with faith, believe for it and to present it back to Him so that He can honor the promise He told you He would do. Well, as He turned around and told Isaac that He was going to have him go sacrifice his son, as Isaac went and his son asked him, he said, Dad, you know, we have the wood, but where's the lamb for us to, you know, sacrifice or where's the, where's the offering? And Abraham told him, the Lord will provide. And as he did that, he also told his servants, my son and I are going up the mount, you wait here and we will return in a little bit or we'll return in a while. Meaning he knew God was going to provide because God had given him the promise that he would be the father of many nations. 
He then blessed him with his son when he was far past the time of being able to have a child. Same thing with his wife. She had a child far beyond the time of being able to naturally have a child without the supernatural intervention of God. He blessed him with that. And now God was telling him he's going to take him. No, Abraham knew one of two things. Either that God would intervene and provide an alternate sacrifice or that Abraham would follow through with sacrificing Isaac, but that God would raise him from the dead and he'd turn around and go right back that mountain with him. If you don't believe me, take time and study the word and look for what I'm telling you. So I want to pick up and read off to you where Abraham first calls God Jehovah Jireh. It's in Genesis 22 verse 14. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, and the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. This is where the name of Jehovah Jireh was first given to God. If you know the story, basically they go up the mount and Abraham makes the altar. His son lays on it. And right as Abraham was getting ready to kill him or to sacrifice him, I should say not kill him, but sacrifice him, an angel of the Lord intervened and they had an alternate sacrifice for him instead. Now, that is Jehovah Jireh. Now, here's what I want to share with you. If God can meet the needs of Abraham after speaking to him that he wants him to sacrifice his son, which is a large, large sacrifice, then how much more has God already agreed to provide for you? I want to read you another scripture. This one's out of Matthew chapter 6, and this is verse 31 through 33. At other times, you may hear me teach on this as the first principle. Let's read. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. When we talk about God providing for us, it tells us in His word that He has provided all of our needs according to His riches and glory. So before you start to worry about how you're going to pay that next bill, before you worry how you're going to turn around and put food on the table or anything nature of that, if there's another need you have, maybe you're worried about whether or not God can give you a child because you've been unable to bear a child so far. What I will tell you is that God meets all of our needs according to His riches and glory. He's our Jehovah Jireh. He is the God who provides. God is no respecter of persons. If He's provided something for another person, He can certainly provide for you. But where your faith is at in that situation might be separating you from Him being able to meet your need. What I mean by that is you must have faith in God and His ability to provide for you to receive the things He has for you. There's one more scripture I want to read you, and it's out of Romans 8.32. He who did not spare His own Son but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If I were teaching you on the five areas of prosperity today, I would tell you that there's five levels. And when people talk about prosperity, some people are like, oh, you're a prosperity preacher, this, this, and that. I am a prosperity preacher. But you may not understand what prosperity is as I do. There are five levels of prosperity. Most people, when you say prosperity, they think financial prosperity. I will tell you that finances are the lowest form of power in God's kingdom. In the enemy's kingdom, the devil's kingdom, finances are the highest form of power. But in God's kingdom, which is far above anything Satan has to offer, finances are the lowest form of authority or the lowest form of power, I should say. The five areas of prosperity are specifically this. There's spiritual prosperity, mental prosperity, physical prosperity, Social prosperity and financial prosperity. I'm going to say that again in order from top to bottom. Spiritual prosperity, mental prosperity, physical prosperity, social prosperity, and financial prosperity. If God said that He would meet all of our needs according to His riches and glory, and according to this scripture in Romans 8.32, that if He gave His own Son, why would He withhold anything for us? That He would give it to us freely, all things, in the name of His Son? then maybe that if you're not having a need met, it's because you haven't gone before Him and confessed His Word back to Him. Or maybe you're simply just not operating by faith to receive what He's already told you He would do. And if you're already doing those things, then I have good news for you. Hang in there and keep doing it just a little while longer because your breakthrough is right around the corner.
Guys, I hope you found this teaching encouraging today. As always, we want to remind you to go by our website at neilreyes.com where you can check out all of our resources. In addition to that, you can follow us on social media, on YouTube or Facebook at Neil Reyes Ministries, or you can find us on Twitter at Neil underscore Reyes, where you can find all of our past teachings. We put out five videos a week that are our Champions Minute videos. They're usually around 10 minutes long, sometimes a little longer, sometimes a little less, but they're meant to be quick, encouraging bursts of the word to give you meat to chew on for the day and to encourage and help you within your life. We want to remind you as always that Jesus loves you and so do we. Thank you and have a blessed day. Drop the